to your equipment station. Can you please identify the piece of equipment in front of you? So in front of me there appears to be two um, epidural sets um, made by Portex. Um, so yeah, two epidural um, sets. Could you please identify the main difference between these two sets? On, on initial inspection, I can see two main differences. One, the gauge of the epidural needle itself is a 16. There's a 16 gauge packet and an 18 gauge packet. And another difference is that the 16 gauge packet is actually open. What else would you like to check before you use this piece of equipment? Okay. Um, when, when using any piece of equipment, you should check that um, the packaging is intact and therefore sterile, as I've said. Um, you'd also like to check that um, the equipment is in date um, and um, uh, suitable for use, therefore. There were lots of symbols on that packet. What does some of them mean? Okay. Um, so there is the date of manufacture, um, the sort of factory symbol, um, which was in uh, 2012. There is the expiry date, which is the um, egg timer, uh, which is expired in 2017, so it's safe to use. Um, the uh, exclamation mark stands for caution. The two with a line through stands for, uh, for single use only, so do not reuse. The latex with a cross is that it's latex free and therefore suitable for use um, with the latex allergy patients. The um, packet um, with a, a tear and a line through it shows that do not use if packaging is damaged. Um, the sterile e EO stands for um, that this is sterile, sterilised using um, ethylene oxide. Um, so yes, those are the, the symbols there. There's another symbol there with a C and an E on. What does that mean? Okay. The CE is a um, European conformity, um, so in other words, a European standardisation mark. Using the open packet, can you please explain the different components? So opening the packet up, we have multiple components in this standardised pack. Let's start with the needle. Uh, this is your standard 16 gauge, in this case epidural needle with uh, detachable clips and a sheath to protect it. Uh, this is a standard 10mm Portex loss of resistance syringe. Um, this is a adapter for threading the catheter in the end of the needle. This is your standard um, um, epidural catheter for use um, with this 16 gauge set. Um, this is a sticker for the epidural line. Um, this is an epidural filter um, and this is the uh, attachment device for attaching the catheter to the filter itself. Looking at the syringe, what type of syringe is it and what can you put in it? So this is a 10, cent, 10 mil um, loss of resistance syringe. You can put saline or air in the syringe. What are the pros and cons of using saline or air? Okay. Um, evidence shows that saline um, gives a lower incidence of postdural puncture headaches or dural punctures itself due to pushing the dura away um, when you achieve loss of resistance. Please tell me about the needle. So, as identified, this is a 16 gauge epidural set, so it's a 16 gauge um, 2E needle. Um, with a, a cover on it. Um, it has a stilette which runs down the middle and detachable wings. So the needle itself is eight centimetres in length um, with two centimetre hub. So the entire TUI um, needle is 10 centimetres long. It has a three centimetre graduation at the beginning and one centimetre markings along here. The markings themselves are called Lee lines. The tip of the needle is called a Huber tip. Please tell me about the filter. So the filter is a bacterial and mechanical filter. So it will filter out glass particulates and it will also filter out bacteria. That's because inside it has a mesh of 0.22 microns. Please tell me about the catheter. So the catheter um, is a standardized sterile catheter with a blue um, tip so um, to ensure safe device removal at the end of its use. It also has um, fenestrated holes um, in it so that when you uh, instill the local anaesthetic it has a good spread or spray of local anaesthetic as opposed to it just coming out the end. The catheter itself has markings um, indicated similar to a central line you could say. Um, the first marking is at 5 centimetres, there's 2 at 10, 3 at 15 and 4 at 20 centimetres.
Are there any recent developments you're aware of that has made, have made this equipment safer? Yeah, there is the potential with this, this setup for uh, incorrect drug administration um, during the initial um, insertion um, due to the lure lock uh, attachment at the end of the syringe and the lure lock on the end of the filter. So manufacturers have developed non-lure lock based um, devices. Other than incorrect drug administration, which you've already mentioned, can you name another three major complications of this procedure? Three major complications. One would be intra-arterial or intravenous local anaesthetic administration. You can then get um, nerve damage, specifically central to, um, to hematoma formation, um, so ending up with paralysis. You can also end up with infective um, causes such as meningitis, secondary to citing the epidural. Are you aware of any recommendations on the use of clexane? before and after the insertion of an epidural? Epidurals um, with clexane are obviously an area of concern. Um, before inserting an epidural you must ensure that there is a 12 hour window post administration of prophylactic clexane. For therapeutic clexane there must be a window of at least 24 hours. After the procedure you must wait at least 4 hours before administering clexane. Thank you very much.